And I don't think it's a political battle. You know, I'm a pastor, and this is the point where I think the church so often loses their way, is we think we need a new politician or a different political party or a different ideology. But it's a spiritual struggle, and without the church in place, standing up for truth, it's God that brings freedom and liberty to our lives, not the government. And the Christian church has to be willing to express not only our voice, but our opinion. Not everybody will cheer, but we want our boss to be pleased with us more than we want our next door neighbor. From time to time here on Center Point, we're going to try to take a look at larger global issues from a 30,000 foot level. In this case, the issue is whether authoritarianism is starting to resurface. Our next guest says we are seeing a rising tide of authoritarianism, not only in places like Russia and China, but right here in the West. And he says Christians need to wake up. Pastor Alan Jackson is senior pastor of World Outreach Church in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, and he joins us now. Pastor, it is great to have you with us. As always, you have made the point that we see authoritarianism rising around the world, but also right here in the West. What are you seeing here in the U.S., in a place like Canada, that has you so alarmed about the infringement on our personal freedoms? Well, it's good to be with you again, Eric. I don't think it, it, it's just a, a casual glance, and I think it's apparent that authoritarianism is raising its ugly head in some new ways, and we don't have to go to the distant places in the world where we see socialist or communist governments. Our Canadian friends, the, our longest border, you know, had an authoritarian response to an expression of concern from truckers, and they weren't leading a violent insurrection. They were simply expressing some opinions around COVID mandates that had been enacted by a government or a prime minister without legislative support, certainly without the will of the people. And the government crushed it. And then it disappeared from our media feeds. And our own State Department really did nothing to stand up for the rights of those individuals. They supported the Canadian government in that. And we go to the opposite border and we see our government refusing to enforce federal law, ignoring the will of people. All the polling is clear. They, they haven't given the American people a choice. They've left our southern border open, which is allowing fentanyl and human trafficking and any number of things to come across that border without any um, really hindrance whatsoever. And we're told just not to look, not to watch. So while we may grieve the authoritarian responses of the you know, Chinese government or of Putin and his government, we don't have to travel around the globe to see it. And I don't think it's a political battle. You know, I'm a pastor, and this is the point where I think the church so often loses their way, is we think we need a new politician or a different political party or a different ideology. But it's a spiritual struggle. And without the church in place, standing up for truth, it's God that brings freedom and liberty to our lives, not the government. And the Christian church has to be willing to express not only our voice, but our opinion. Not everybody will cheer, but we want our boss to be pleased with us more than we want our next door neighbor. So... We watched President Reagan stand up to authoritarianism when he called for Gorbachev to tear down the wall. And for a decade or more, we saw it recede. It changed the Middle East. It changed our globe. And now we're at a point, and the question is, what will this generation do? What will the church and this generation do with that spiritual challenge? Yeah, Pastor, you've said that one reason we see our freedom slipping away is because we've got a largely weak and ineffective church in many ways. What are you seeing in the body of Christ that also has you alarmed, the kind of tepid response to this government overreach, not only here in the U.S., but across the West. Well, I think for too long the church has been asleep. You know, when you're asleep, you're uninvolved, unconcerned, you're just disengaged. It's not an evil place, it's a normal part of a life cycle, but it's not a fruitful place. And we're going to have to wake up to the reality of our day. Not only is authoritarianism increasing, paganism is growing. And both of those are spiritual challenges that are made possible because the church has stepped away. You know, we talk about political vacuums where we see weak political leadership. Or well, there's weak spiritual leadership. There are other spiritual forces that fill that void. And we see the rise of paganism right alongside the authoritarianism in our own culture. Again, we don't have to travel. We've watched them redefine the family. And then they've redefined marriage. And now we're unable to define male and female in the public square. This isn't about an individual. Our culture is unwilling to engage that discussion. Well, the church has to find our voice. Uh, the, the most charitable way to say it is we've been asleep. And if we can awaken, if the Spirit of God can breathe new life into us, and if we have the courage and the boldness to speak the truth, I believe we can see a change. 
I sat down last week with a, a pastor friend of mine. I've worked with him for more than 20 years. He pastors in Belarus and Ukraine. And they were telling us about the courageous response of the people in Ukraine. They said the farmers in western Ukraine, just with small family farms, were taking their livestock, their chicken and their pigs, the things that were just a part of their lives, and slaughtering them, canning the meat, and sending it to the soldiers on the front. They weren't waiting for the government or for some NGO or for some formal response. They were standing together against these expressions of authoritarianism and evil. Well, there is a more dangerous enemy walking the streets of our nation than is walking the streets of the Ukraine. They're not Russian tanks, but it's a spiritual battle. And the church is the one that God has raised up to make a difference in this season. If we will allow the Spirit of God to give us eyes to see and ears to hear, I believe we can see a move of the Spirit of God. But it'll take a new response from the church. Pastor, in the short time we have left, it seems like we almost have a dilemma of sorts uh, as the church because we, we, in many cases, strongly disagree with the policies of our government. But at the same time, uh, the Bible uh, com commands us to pray for those in authority. How do we kind of bridge that divide where we strongly oppose the policies, but we still have to pray for those in authority as mandated by God? Well, I think it's a great question, and we definitely have an assignment to pray for whoever has authority over us. But it doesn't diminish the assignment we have to stand for the truth. We're called, the, in the book of Romans, we're challenged to overcome evil with good, not to be overcome by evil. And I think, by and large, we've adopted the attitude of being overlookers. We will overlook evil rather than engage it or deal with it or challenge it or stand against it. And I believe God is asking us to find a new response, not to be angry or condemning of our leaders. We have to pray for them and ask for God's mercy in their lives. But we have to stand for the truth of the king. That's our assignment. Pastor Jackson, thank you so much for your insights. And I have to mention, our viewers can see you every week right here on TBN as well, your great program here on TBN. Pastor, thanks for joining us. God bless. Keep up the great work.